Hey, Pastor Gary here for another Wednesday's Word. So glad that you could join us today. Um, just before we begin, I uh, want to remind you to uh, just be in church this Sunday. Pastor Joe will start a new sermon series entitled In the End Times. Uh, you don't want to miss it. There's two opportunities for you to join us. 9 o'clock at our Magnolia campus, 1045 at our Spring campus. For more information, visit our website at bfchurch.com. Today, I thought I'd uh, just do the Wednesday's Word in our youth room here at the Spring campus. Uh, our Spring Youth Group meets uh, at on Sunday mornings. Uh, right after corporate worship, they come up here. Pastor Matt provides them a lesson, and then they meet on Sunday evenings as well at 515. And so if you have a, a youth age ch child that's grade 7 to 12, they're more than welcome to come and be a part of this uh, just great ministry opportunity, just great ministry, as well as our children. If uh, you have kids, you know, from essentially from birth to sixth grade, uh, they're either going to be in our nursery, our, our Sunday school classes upstairs in the morning, or our Wanish program here on uh, at our spring campus. Uh, at Magnolia, of course, we have our children's uh, ministry, but our youth are meeting as well Sunday morning, and I believe on Wednesday evening. So for more information regarding any of the ministries uh, for our students, that's children's and or youth, uh, visit our website at bfchurch.com. Today, I thought we'd spend some time in Proverbs, because uh, Proverbs really, I mean, it's an instruction manual for life. It contains observations on our day-to-day -day behavior and personal character. And, and I like the, I just really enjoy reading through Proverbs. I encourage everybody to take a month and just read a proverb, uh, take a, take a month and just every day read a proverb. And it's just, it's just a great reminder, uh, how we should live and how we should conduct our, our, ourselves with, you know, within the day to day of our lives. Uh, Proverbs in the beginning, it provides a series of lessons that a father is teaching his son. And then the later chapters emphasizes how God's wisdom applies to the changing life situations as the son matures. So as we mature as Christians, uh, our life, the situations in our life changes. And, and how do we, you know, apply what we've learned it through in God's word in our daily lives? And so Proverbs is just a, it's just a great resource, a great tool uh, for us to how to maneuver through life. And, and so I want to open up to, go ahead and open your Bible up to Proverbs 1, and we're going to read Proverbs 1, verse 1 through verse 6. Uh, before we get started, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this time, Father. Father, I just pray, Father, that during this time, Father, that you just block out the noise, Father. Just remove any distractions that, that might come our way, Father, so that we can just spend time, Father, dedicated time at your feet, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. So let's read Proverbs 1, verses 1 through 6. Uh, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to discern the sayings of understanding, to receive instruction in wise behavior, righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the naive, to the youth, knowledge, and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase in learning, and a man of understanding will acquire wise counsel. To understand a proverb and a figure, the words of the wise and their riddles. See, Proverbs was written so that we can become wise in God's eyes. We need wisdom, which is the ability to apply the knowledge that we have. In education, they talk a lot about Bloom's taxonomy. And Bloom's taxonomy is a pyramid it's a pyramid. And so bottom level is, is the lower level learning, remembering, memorizing, and then you go to apply and then finally create. And as Christians, we need to, you know, increase in our learning as well. We need to go from the, the remembering and, and the memorizing, uh, the lower level knowledge to applying that knowledge in our daily life. And so uh, Proverbs 1, 7, and this is uh, really the verse that we're going to key in on today. Uh, Proverbs 1, 7 says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. This verse is both the theme of the book and the key that unlocks the way to wisdom. You know, we first we must develop the fear of the Lord. In this verse, we see the essence, the necessity, and the neglect of the fear of the Lord. So let's look at the essence of fear of the Lord. So at the, at the beginning of that verse, it says fear of the Lord. When we truly fear the Lord, we recognize that he is the creator and we are the created. It's the idea of being so in awe of God that I long to obey him. 
To fear God is to have a heart that is sensitive to both his grace and his mercy. It means we simultaneously experience great awe and deep joy. The second part of that verse tells us the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And that's where the necessity of fear of the Lord comes from. We will never find wisdom by worshiping a God made in our own image. When we fear God, we are humbled. Until our hearts are right, we're unable to receive what James 3.17 says, that the wisdom comes from heaven. We will never receive that wisdom if we don't humble our hearts and have the right heart to receive that knowledge and then apply it in our lives. Because see, here's the thing. If, if we want to know anything, we must grow in our fear of the Lord. Without that, we know nothing. See, Proverbs 1.7 at the end, it, it, sh it, it shows the contrast between those who fear the Lord and the fools who don't. It says, fools despise wisdom and instruction. And that's where we get to the third thing I want to look at within this is the neglect of the fear of the Lord. The word despise means to scorn, to hold in contempt. There are only two types of categories of people in the world, the wise and the wicked. Those who revere and those who reject. God fears and godless fools. In Proverbs, the fool is the one who does not follow God's ways. He is the one who knows the right thing, the, knows the right thing to do, but instead does the opposite or simply does nothing. Proverbs one thirty two says, the complacency of fools will destroy them. The book of Proverbs lists several benefits that result from living in the fear of the Lord. One of the best ways we can stay away from sin is to fear the Lord. Proverbs 3, 7, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. If you are serious about following God, then focus on fearing God. Fearing God is having the continual awareness that our loving Heavenly Father is watching everything we think, do, and say. The fear of God can also give us confidence according to Proverbs 14, 26. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence, and His children will have a refuge. Speaking of children, we are called to raise them in fear of the Lord according to Psalms 34, 11. Come you Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Most of us struggle to be content in life. So fearing God can help us find satisfaction. Proverbs 15, 16. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and turmoil with it. Proverbs uh, 9, 19, 23. The fear of the Lord leads to life so that one may sleep satisfied untouched by evil. There is no way to become wise apart from the word of God. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how smart you are. If you, if you don't know the Bible, then you're ignorant. You lack the wisdom of God's word. So have you devoted yourself to the word of God? See, we have to be determined to get wisdom. Listen to the action verbs found in, in, in Proverbs 2. So let's, let's look at Proverbs 2, verses 1 through 6. And I want to look, I want you to focus on the action verbs there. My son, if you receive, that's diligently hear my words and treasure, that's secure, right? To, and treasure, that, that means to secure, to hold up my commandments within you. Make your ear attentive. That means to play, pay close attention to wisdom, and incline your heart. That means be drawn toward, lean in to understanding. If you cry, that's invite, summon, to, to bring in for discernment. So if you cry for discernment and lift, that means give your voice for understanding. If you seek, search, discover, if you seek her like silver and search for her as for hidden treasures. See, three times Solomon writes, if you... To show that if we want wisdom, we must be determined to go and get it. Verse 5 begins with then. If we are proactively going after wisdom, then we, become, we will become wise. Then you will discern the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, from, come, uh, from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Increasingly, Proverbs 1 teaches fearing God leads to wisdom. Chapter two says the uh, says to, the search for wisdom leads to fearing God. The third thing is we have to be determined to act.
ask for wisdom. In 1 Kings 3.5, uh, it tells us that one night God appeared to Solomon and said, you know, ask what I shall give you. This was Solomon's opportunity. This was his chance to ask for anything that he wanted, right? This was his opportunity to say, I want riches. I want gold. I want, you know, I'll, I'll just all these f- desires. He could have asked for anything that he wanted. But Solomon, Solomon's answer was, was startling in its simplicity. He merely requested, he merely requested a discerning heart and the ability to distinguish between right, right and wrong. God was pleased with his request and said in verse 12, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind. See, we must make the decision to want more, want wisdom more than anything else. Finally, we have to dedicate ourselves to Jesus. Colossians 2, 2 through 3 says that their hearts may be encouraged having been knit together in love and attaining to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding, resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery. That is Christ himself in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. If you don't yet know Christ, then you need to come to him in faith. If you already are a believer, then make sure you are fully surrendered to him. It's one thing to be committed. It's another thing to be surrendered. To know and love and to follow Jesus is to gain wisdom. Amen? Well, amen. And so, it, you know, that's how we should live our lives is, is yearning, desiring. You know, as a treasure hunter searches for a treasure, we should be seeking wisdom in God's word. And we should be asking daily for that wisdom. And we do that by spending quality time in prayer in his word, seeking his will for our lives. So I encourage you just to continue to pray and seek God's face in your life. If you don't know God, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, That's where you start because you cannot have wisdom. You cannot have knowledge until you have a fear of the Lord. And that comes with knowing that Jesus, you know, is the only way. Amen. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father God. Father, I thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy, Father. Father, I, I do seek wisdom, Father. And I ask, Father for discernment, Father. Father, even in these days, Father, I ask for discernment, Father, of all the things that come across us and coming through our minds, Father. I ask that you just, you're able to just speak to us, Father, in a mighty way, Father. Father, thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. Well, hey, look forward to seeing you at church on Sunday. God bless.